Namaste friends, my name is Amit Garg. Welcome to my channel, Vedic Astro Amit. Today we'll talk about uh, Sun in Bharani from April 27th through May 11th. Before this, if you haven't already, please watch uh, the other video, Sun in Ashwini right now. So that'll give you an uh, idea about this 12 days of miracles. Uh, so please watch that video if you haven't already. Uh, see, these videos are very important because uh, they tell you the deeper energy of a planet. If you want to understand what uh, the planet represents in your chart, you want to see the placement of nakshatra, not just the zodiac sign. Uh, I'll give you an example. For example, let's say two people have uh, their uh, moon in Aries. Okay, so both of them have their moon in Aries. One has moon in Ashwini. The other one has moon in Bharani they'll be completely different personalities, like night and day difference. So that's why it's extremely important to understand uh, the energy of nakshatras. And also uh, there's a difference whether moon is in um, uh, Ashwini or Bharani or sun is in Ashwini. So every planet will have a different energy uh, in each nakshatra. So it's very important. So that's how you can figure out, uh, do the chart interpretation. Okay. And so if you want to learn more uh, deep dive into nakshatras, uh, we have this course uh, coming up, um, nine-week live course on nakshatra starting April 24th. So that'll be on Zoom. Um, we'll deep dive into nakshatras and learn through the practical application on charts of uh, famous personalities. So let's get started. As always, uh, if you want to learn or, or understand uh, the placement of any planet in a nakshatra or any uh, combination, uh, you want to understand the energy of the nakshatra, you want to understand the energy of the planet, and then uh, several other things. So we'll discuss that. So overall, Bharani, the big theme with Bharani is birth and death. So it's, it's a very fascinating nakshatra. You'll see... Uh, amazing personalities who were born in Ashwini, uh, in Bharani Nakshatra. Uh, the first example is Carl Jung. He was uh, the Swiss uh, psychiatrist and psychoanalyst. His moon is in Bharani. You can imagine. Uh, second is uh, Edgar Cayce. His moon is in Bharani and he's the, he, he was the clairvoyant uh, who spoke from higher self uh, in a trance-like state. So these are big names in psychology, in psychiatry, in, in the areas of subconscious mind. So a very deep uh, nakshatra. Uh, if you have any planets in this nakshatra, utilize the creative energy, the creative potential of that planet, uh, depending, depending on which house it's placed. And so we'll talk about uh, sun in Bharani today. So from here, you can get a clue how you can uh, sort of interpret any planet in any nakshatra. Uh, so, uh, first of all, Bharani, it's uh, ruled by Venus. Okay, so there is an element of pleasure, there's an element of uh, enjoyment, uh, and also sexuality. So there's a big theme of these things. Venusian energy is very important here. The other thing with Venus is it's also deep healing. Venus is the planet of healing. A lot of people don't uh, recognize that. It's the... The deity for Venus is Shukracharya, right? He's the one who knows uh, Sanjeevani Vidya, who has Sanjeevani Vidya. He's the only one, right? So Venus is deep healing. So this nakshatra is very powerful uh, for cleansing, for healing. Uh, and, and we'll discuss uh, in detail uh, what this theme means, the birth and death. Okay. So then we see uh, which planet uh, we're talking about, right? The sun. Sun is, uh, is the soul significator for our soul, Atmakaraka, natural Atmakaraka. Sun is ultimate truth, the king. Sun is the king of the solar system. The king wants to get to the root of the matter. Uh, king wants to figure out the truth. Sun is also about cleansing and purification as well, because the sun rays, the, the heat and light of the sun that is purifying and cleansing. Okay. Um, and then, uh, of course, it's... Uh, in the in the zodiac sign of Aries, and the ruler is Mars. So Sun is exalted in Aries. So those qualities matter. Uh, Mars is uh, brings in uh, the energy uh, of action and passion and aggression. All of those you'll see in Bharani Nakshatra. So so let's get started. So start with the symbol of Bharani. The symbol of Bharani is yoni, uh, the female reproductive organ. So what does all that mean? 
It means immense energy of creativity. This is the most creative nakshatra of all the 27 nakshatras. I have seen people with, uh, you know, important planets in Bharani. They are, you know, either artists or uh, painters or, or they create, uh, you know, give birth to big projects and big things in life. And they are very, very deep. This creativity is not just superficial, artificial, or, uh, you know, materialistic creativity. This is deep uh, creativity coming from uh, their soul. Okay. Um, and then um, it's also a very hidden nakshatra. Uh, that means uh, the creativity or the things that they give birth to, they, are, they remain hidden until it's time uh, for that to, to come uh, to light. So they don't advertise, they don't like publicize what they're working on. It's a, it's a very secretive hidden, just like the baby, right? So unless, of course, it starts showing up in the belly, uh, the belly growing, but otherwise it's like you're just uh, giving birth to something uh, in a very uh, hidden and safe and secret uh, place. Uh, so it's a it's a it's a nakshatra that has connection with subconscious mind, like very deep hidden layers of our mind. So it's a very deep nakshatra. Okay. It's also so this is going to be so the sun and burning. This is going to be taking place at a at the soul level. Okay, so it's going to be very deep. Anything we talked about. Uh, so during these days, um, April twenty seventh through May eleventh, anything you do, anything you give birth to. It will come from a very deep place and that will impact your soul directly. So make sure you're giving birth to something uh, something that is holistic, that is sattvic, that is dharmic, uh, that is for the higher good. Okay. The second thing is uh, the deity for Bharani is Yamraj, the god of death. Yamraj, what does he do? Uh, once a person dies, Yamraj is the one who, who uh, is the one who comes and takes away the soul to the other plane of existence, right? To Pitrilok, which we call Pitrilok, the, the plane of existence where uh, the ancestors or the, the souls, uh, they, they travel to that loka, that plane of existence after death, okay? So what does that mean? That gives uh, this energy of, first of all, letting go, okay? So the death is the, the primary theme. Letting go of something that's that's served its purpose and, and lived its life, uh, and then also transformation, big, big nakshatra for transformation, change and transformation, regeneration and renewal. So it's the cycle of life and death. That's what this nakshatra represents. It's the cycle of life and death, the karmic cycle, the karmic wheel. Okay. Um, so, so the death is not just, the death is not the end. It's a cycle remember that. Um, and so the Yamaraj is taking away the soul. There is also a theme uh, of uh, transportation, literally. So Bharani people may actually be working in transportation industry, literally. Uh, or they could also be working uh, as an energy healer. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big nakshatra for healing, deep cleansing. As I mentioned, Venus is the ruler. Uh, and Yamaraj is is just cleansing what's not needed and taking away the soul. So taking basically taking away the essential thing that you know the the letting go of the superficial, but preserving and taking away the real substance, which is our soul, to the next plane of existence. That that's what Yamaraj does. Now association with Venus and also the female reproductive organs, all of that also adds element of sexuality and pleasure and passion, okay? So there could be tendency uh, of too much passion, too much uh, uh, sexual tendencies, all of that is also possible here. Then there's also uh, an element of indulgence. So that could be, need not be sexuality, but indulgence in any area of life, depending on which house, depending on what planet we're talking about. So there's a, uh, a lot of possibility uh, or even sometimes danger of overindulgence, okay? Now, this is uh, Nakshatra ruled by Yamraj, right? So he takes away the soul. It's kind of, um, it's a very dharmic uh, nakshatra in the way that Yamraj sort of judges uh, or, or takes account of our karma, uh, goes over our karmic account, karmic balance, right? So 
sort of giving judgment, not in a bad way, but basically what we did in this lifetime. So it's a very, uh, a very idealistic and also uh, a dharmic uh, nakshatra, which upholds uh, the principles of fairness and accountability and responsibility. So there's a sense of strong sense of dharma here. Okay. Um, and then so sun in Bharani, you'll have uh, this, uh, this energy of, uh, you know, th there'll be uh, potential to execute big plans as a leader. So execution is important here, uh, not just uh, planning. Okay. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, natural healing, deep cleansing, all of those are uh, powerful. There could be challenges here, uh, especially challenges with the authority, with the establishment, because what you're doing is you're changing a transformation, complete death and rebirth. So you may be changing the society, uh, the, the structure in the society. So you may upset the traditional people. You may upset the traditions or the hierarchies. Okay, So there could be power struggles. There could be challenges, a lot of issues, arguments, or uh, problems because of authorities. There could be a lot of arrogance also because we're talking about uh, sun here especially. So sun could also represent ego. So be careful about all of those issues. Now, there's a lot of remedies we can do. Uh, first of all, there's a connection with the other planes of existence and other beings. So uh, this is a nakshatra for worshiping and connecting with our ancestors. So you can do mantras, chant mantras. You can do, give donation uh, to uh, for in the name of ancestors. You can do puja, yagya, all of that. Secondly, um, there's a uh, you know you can also uh, meditate on um, death, the process of death. So so things like shavasan, uh, doing shavasan, and also uh, yoga nidra, excellent for that. Lucid dreaming. All of those will be really powerful here. Now, one specific mantra and also, you know, one planet that's associated with this whole process of death also is Shani, Saturn. So you can do the Shani mantra, um, you know, th that, that associates with uh, death as well. Okay, so that mantra is Om Bhag Bhavai Vidmahe Mrityu Rupai Dhimahi Tanno Shani Prachodaya. So, you know, it, it, it'll be a good exercise if uh, all of you watching, you can uh, type this mantra in the comments. Um, and this becomes like a collective remedy for all of us. Okay, so the mantra is Om Bhag Bhavai Vid Mahe Mritti Rupai Dhimahi Tanno Shani Prachodaya. That, that's a good remedy or, or a mantra you can chant throughout this transit. Now, also keep in mind, um, this other transits happening, of course. So Venus is going to be in Bharani as well, uh, starting 5th of May. So the last five, six days, Venus will also be in Bharani. So that will actually add more uh, this idea of enjoyment and pleasure and sexuality. So you got to be careful the last five days. At the same time, Jupiter will be uh, going in uh, Taurus. So Jupiter will be uh, so Jupiter will be going to Taurus on May 1st. So that shift will be there. But Overall, this uh, video, so we're focusing on the energy of sun in Bharani, um, and that has very deep meaning. And you can see now, uh, based on your rising signs, so we'll go over all the 12 rising signs, uh, basically focus on this overall theme of birth and death, what things you can give birth to. So a lot of creativity, and what things uh, you want to transform or re rejuvenate or regenerate or renewal or, or even... Uh, you know, let go so that you can have the new thing in your life. So that's the overall theme uh, when you're analyzing. So keep that in mind. So now we'll go over all the 12 rising signs and discuss specifically how that affects you. Still, I get a lot of questions whether we should see this sign, that sign. This is we're talking about the rising sign, which is known as the Lagna. We're talking about sidereal zodiac. Uh, we're, not, we're not talking about the moon sign. We're not talking about the Janma nakshatra. We're talking about the rising sign, so one by one you can watch, let's say you're watching the uh, section on Aries. Uh, so the Aries means if your rising sign, if your Lagna is Aries, then uh, watch the a a section on Aries like that. Okay, so let's get started. So this is uh, what's happening for Aries rising, L Aries Lagna. The sun will be in Bharani Nakshatra, you can see here, in your first house, in your Lagna itself, right? 
Um, and as I mentioned, so Jupiter will actually move away from Aries uh, as of May 1st, and Venus will be uh, entering um, Barney. So Venus is already, uh, will be in Aries, uh, but Venus will join Sun in Bharani as of May 1st. So, but we'll focus on Sun in Bharani. So what does that mean? So Sun is the fifth house lord. Okay. So Sun is the ruler of Leo and it's sitting in the first house. Okay. So the fifth lord is in your first house, uh, rising sign in the nakshatra of Bharani. What does that mean? So for Aries rising, uh, the biggest thing is you will transform yourself. You will rediscover yourself. See, the other video, Sun in Ashwini, that's a very different energy. So that's why people say, hey, this is just a two or three week transit. Uh, does it matter? It matters huge. There's a big shift. So you can't just see Sun in Aries overall. Yes, it gives a lot of, so for example, Sun in Aries, uh, you can see initiative and drive and action and leadership, all of that is good. But sun in Aries, uh, sun in Ashwini in Aries versus sun in Bharani in Aries will be very different energy. Okay, so here, uh, literally, it will be like Phoenix rising. Okay, so there'll be death of your old self and rebirth uh, into a new personality, into a new persona. This transformation will happen um, at the soul level for you, especially for Aries rising. This is going to be a massive transformation you will not you may not realize but you'll see the results over time you may actually feel this churning going on internally so so first of all let go of maybe old belief system you know letting go in your life of things that are not serving you you don't need to hold on to negative patterns or or anything that's not serving you Embrace the highest good, the highest energy. So this is complete transformation, regeneration, renewal for you, yourself, your being. Okay, um, literally you could actually be, uh, you know, transform, uh, traveling to other planes of existence. Okay, uh, so e extreme creativity. So on the other side, so by the end of this transit, you you may actually give birth to a lot of things. So creativity is big. This is the fifth Lord, which represents creativity. And Bharani is the nakshatra of creativity. So for Aries rising, uh, immense uh, out, you know, downpour of creativity. Uh, so you got to figure out your hidden talents. Uh, tap into your subconscious mind at the soul level. Okay. Um, and then there's also a, a possibility of uh, figuring out things that you didn't know exist about yourself. Okay. Also, this is the time to stand up for justice. Okay. Uh, dharma. Because first, it's taking place in first house. That's you. Uh, Bharani is uh, all about justice and fairness uh, and accountability. So if you've been lazy or you've been um, even doing um, unethical things or th non things are not dharmic, this will be problematic for you. So this is the time. Actually, the universe is giving you an opportunity to, to be uh, truthful, to be dharmic, to stand for justice, and to be fair from now on. Uh, secondly, this is the time uh, to execute things, to be a leader, but you know, actually do things on the ground. Uh, you'll have a lot of energy to do things, make things happen. First house, make sure there's no ego coming in. So uh, stay away from any issues or power struggles with the authorities. There may be challenges with authorities for you especially, okay? Uh, you may be upsetting the, the traditional way of thinking or, or people who are still very traditional. So there's nothing wrong in following the tradition, but you may be uh, changing around things. Uh, you may be, uh, you know, uh, upsetting the hierarchies. So be cautious on that. Okay. Uh, you'll have a lot of determination. You'll have a lot of uh, passion to, to uh, work towards your goals. And essentially, this is the chance the universe is going to tell you the purpose of your soul uh, existence, basically. Your Atma Karaka will figure out. It's like new birth for you, literally. You'll figure out the purpose of your life. Okay. Uh, but you got to be truthful. You got to take action. Uh, be very creative. Now, also, 
fifth house represents our children. So all of these things uh, may apply to your children as well. So they may be going through this huge transformation, your children. Encourage them uh, to be creative. Encourage them to let go of old patterns. Encourage them to be truthful and dharmic and be like a, a judge, a, 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 you know, um, uh, follow dharma. Be truthful, follow, you know, uh, be a good judge of things in their own life. The other thing is, it's also a fifth house is also our romantic partners, uh, uh, romantic relationships. So there could be a tendency of uh, too much indulgence in romantic relationships. So a lot of passion and sexuality. Uh, so don't take it to, to an extreme. So that's one caution. Okay, so because fifth house is um, uh, romantic relationships. And uh, the so we may actually also need to evaluate are those relationships serving us okay because this is the theme of birth and death so there may be new opportunities you may actually meet new people uh, but also there may be letting go of the old uh, relationships romantic relationships but you have to evaluate you have to see if it's working for you then take it to the highest level it's not it's not just about letting go of people in your life it's about letting go of old patterns so if there are issues things happening in your relationship that are not serving you so take it to the next higher level Re rejuvenate give birth to the new uh, you know, new relationship even with the existing uh, you know same person renewal of your romantic relationships now also uh, fifth house is speculation as well so uh, uh, be careful. I mean, this this could be a time of re-evaluating your uh, strategy for stock stock market and investment and all of that. Okay. Okay. So that's for the sign of Aries. Big uh, window of op opportunity for you to rediscover yourself, uh, transform yourself, and discover really who you are, the purpose of your life. Next, we'll discuss uh, Bharani rising sign. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Taurus rising sign. Next is the rising sign of Bharani. If you haven't already, please watch the intro section. Uh, very detailed and interesting discussion on Bharani and sun in Bharani. So uh, uh, Taurus rising, so next, Taurus rising, we're talking about the uh, sun's transit in Bharani. Uh, so this is taking place in your 12th house. Sun will be in Bharani nakshatra in your 12th house. And sun is your fourth house lord. So fourth lord uh, sitting in the 12th house, in the nakshatra of Bharani. So we're talking about uh, this transit. So, so let's see what that means. Uh, first of all, uh, as I said, the overall theme for Bharani is uh, li uh, life and death, birth and death. And as we know, 12th house is uh, the house of other planes of existence. So basically Yamaraj, you know, the, the god of death, he has affinity for the 12th house. Okay. Uh, so literally, this is the time your soul will actually do lots of astral travel. Uh, see, the sun in Ashwini was different. Now sun in Bharani means literally Yamaraj is there to assist you before your death, right? So you can voluntarily uh, basically leave your body even every night or during the day you can do uh, some of these guided meditations for astral travel. This is perfect opportunity to travel to the other planets, to the other planes of existence, uh, or even uh, meet your ancestors' lineage. Bharani is the, the heart of this whole <coughs> transit of uh, sun in Aries, uh, which is touching you at the soul level. Okay. So there, there's going to be a huge uh, transformation and change and letting go. So letting go is big for Taurus rising because 12th house is considered house of losses. So it'll become easier for you to let go of things. Um, but you got to figure out what things you want to let go. And then, and then after you let go, so that will create space for something new. Um, and so this is sort of like regeneration and renewal and transformation. Uh, of your subconscious mind okay that could mean letting go of the past trauma 
uh, from this life or even from uh, past life. So uh, past life regression is an excellent thing for you to do. Okay, you can do past life regression uh, sessions online or in, in person, hypnotherapy, all of that. So letting go of the uh, wounds, trauma from the past life is that's what you can do. And that will happen. So this is a, a sort of a prediction as well, meaning energies are ripe. Even if you don't do anything, you know, you'll have that energy. Things will happen on their own as well. But uh, knowing this transit, we can consciously make an effort to expedite that process, to help that process become even more powerful. So that's the whole idea about astrology is to figure out, you know, sort of understand what's going on, what's helping, what what's the energy for today, tomorrow, or this week, or this, this whole month, so that we can work accordingly because we still have free will. Okay, so all of these things that I'm mentioning, these are recommendations based on the energy of the universe. So th those things will happen automatically, but we can speed them up, we can give them more energy, more power, we can ac accelerate them and make them even more uh, meaningful in our life, okay? Now, 12th house is also the house of sexual activity, right? So for Taurus rising, there may be a, a tendency to go that way, uh, you know, to excess of like sexual pleasure or uh, all of this, uh, any kind of pleasure, but also, uh, expenditure, spending a lot of money. So they may feel like uh, showing off or just uh, overindulgence in any sort of pleasure. So that's one uh, safeguard. That's, that's one caution you need to have is, uh, you know, restrict your uh, passion um, and uh, overindulgence in any of those activities. And this is the time to heal your subconscious mind. Okay, so this naksha, this transit is all about healing at a very deep level, cleansing. And it's taking place in the 12th house for Taurus. That means you can really heal um, and cleanse and rejuvenate your subconscious mind. Uh, so let's say, you know, you, you feel there's like fog or, you know, illusion about things. So this, this transit will cleanse all of that. This is the transit uh, to awaken all the hidden talents. 12th house is the hidden talents. So Sun and Bharani will actually, it's a, a huge creativity, first of all. So this will bring to light uh, all of your things that, you know, you thought you're good at, but never tried, or uh, you've been, you know, thinking of doing some things. This is the time to pick up any of those hidden talents you, you may have. Um, especially you can do lucid dreaming every night so that in your dreams, you'll get the messages as to what things you're supposed to be doing, what things you're good at in the past lives, what things you've already mastered, okay? Um, this is also uh, the time for isolation. So voluntary isolation, that means deep meditation going on a retreat, especially in a foreign country. This is ideal time for that. Uh, or just any restricted places, like within your home also, let's say uh, for a few hours or even for one day, uh, you'll remain in isolation or just... Uh, on your own, or you'll talk less. Good, good time for fasting, especially. Okay, this is the time for uh, liberation, literally enlightenment. You know, possible to get enlightened during this transit for Taurus rising. That powerful energy, uh, Bharani is literally uh, Yamraj is here for you. You know, helping you. Now, Sun is also your fourth lord. So that means a lot of things connected with your mother, with your place of residence, with real estate. Uh, so this could be a big change, uh, a period of change and transformation for your mother. Some big things may be happening in her life. So assist her with that. Or your relationship with your mother may undergo a huge change. Not just change in a bad way. This is also the time of creativity. You know, uh, watch the intersection. So the female reproductive organ is the is the symbol of Bernie. So this is the literally the time uh, to uh, create something new in your relationship with your mother or something for your mom. Okay, uh, in your home also same thing. So maybe re uh, renovation in your place of residence uh, or changing residence also possible. Okay. Uh, real estate is also fourth house. So I'll be a little careful, cautious about real estate. So make sure, you know, you're changing things. Uh, or the, you know, you're not, don't 
want to put in a lot of big investments and big things for uh, real estate because this is actually the time for cleansing. Yes, you can give birth to something new, uh, but be very cautious because it's the the twelfth law, twelfth uh, house that is involved as well. You'll also uh, see that this is going to be a huge change in your emotions, the way you process information, uh, the way you react to external stimuli. Okay. Um, also, in terms of security, your sense of security will go, go undergo a big shift. You may start feeling more secure in, in new situations or in general in your life. This is going to make you feel uh, protected and nurtured. That's the fourth house. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, there may be change in traditions and heritage and family values. That's our fourth house. Uh, the way you've been brought up, so you may undergo some shift uh, versus, you know, traditionally how things um, are, are, the traditions that your family follows and things like that. So those may undergo a shift. You may come up with some new ideas for your family. So all of this, a big time for change. So the fourth house and the 12th house are activated, which are both uh, moksha sthanas, right? So big time um, literally to get enlightened. So that's all for the sign of Taurus. And next we'll discuss the sign of Gemini. Next is the sign of Gemini, uh, Gemini rising, uh, Lagna. Uh, the first house is your Gemini. So for Gemini rising, uh, the sun will be in Bharani in your 11th house and sun is the third house ruler. So third Lord going over, uh, transiting in your um, 11th house. Watch the intersection to understand the deeper meaning of Bharani and all the things uh, about sun in Bharani and also the remedies we discussed. So this is taking place in your 11th house. A huge opportunity to shine. Uh, you know, 11th house is reaching out to the masses, right? So sun is there. That means it will eliminate that area of life. So this is big opportunity uh, to, to, first of all, uh, this will bring in a lot of change and transformation in your uh, friend circle, in your social circle. So there'll be a lot of letting go of things or people who are not serving uh, and then meeting new people. So regeneration, renewal uh, in your relationships and connection. And these connections that you develop here now during this transit will be at the soul level. Okay. Uh, so there is the sun is in burning uh, and, and this is going to give birth to something new. Uh, and then 11th house is also our finances, um, house of gains, right? So the way you look at finances, the way you manage your finances, the way you uh, even like earn your livelihood, that the, the way you earn from your li livelihood, that will uh, change. You may look at your uh, ways of earning in a more holistic, more dharmic manner. You may become more fair uh, and uh, very sattvic, you know, very ethical especially in the way you earn money. So if at all you had any unethical means of earning your livelihood, this is going to change. Uh, this is going to um, make a huge transformation and change in the way you earn your livelihood. Okay, 11th house is also our desires. Okay, Now this is very big caution for Gemini because uh, it's the third house ruler, which is your desires as well, but then it's going through the 11th house. Now, I talked about this in uh, other videos also, but this is the crux of this transit. Sun's transit in Aries for Gemini rising. I talked about in other videos that this will trigger a lot of desires. Bharani is the nakshatra. It's the crux of, of that specific uh, area of life. Uh, so you have to be very careful in your desires uh, during this transit okay so because bharani is the the symbol is the female reproductive organ and so there could be uh, there could be tendency to focus on too much on uh, all sorts of desires sexual desires pleasure seeking all of that uh, so it, this may uh, exaggerate all of that okay so you, and venus is a, a you know neutral or a friend of of mercury so so in a way uh, this is the time to uh, exercise caution in terms of desires. If you have holistic desires, if you have dharmic desires, very fair and uh, helping the masses, that's 11th house. 
then this transit will really support you. You can be very, very creative in that. But if you have like base desires, then this is going to be a problematic period for you. Now, third house is also uh, skills, right? So learning new stuff. And then it's going in the 11th house. That means bringing out to the world. So Bharani Nakshatra is extremely creative. Third house is the house of skills. And 11th house is the house of bringing things to the, to the world. So this will literally, you will have uh, some skills or some uh, things that you can literally bring out to the world and present to the world, you know, share with the world and help the humanity, help the masses with that. Uh, you may also undergo a huge transformation and change in your relationship with your siblings. And that could be both elder siblings or older siblings or younger siblings because 11th house is older siblings and third house, which is the ruler of third house son is in 11th house, third house is younger siblings. So overall, this could be a very, uh, a, you know, transformative period for your relationship with your siblings. Uh, third house is also short distance travel. So this may be a period where, um, you know, you'll, you'll have a lot of ideas, creativity that's burning, a lot of fresh ideas, uh, how to go about meet people, networking, marketing, sales, all of that will be the focus. And even how to present things in the media. So if you are into this kind of business or if you need to promote your business, uh, do things like so. This, uh, these uh, couple of weeks uh, will be will give you huge, uh, you know, dose of creativity. How to market yourself, how to uh, express yourself in the media, how to present your your business or your brand or yourself in the media. So this is ideal time to work on your creative projects, creative works, so that you can bring those out to the world uh, for your business or for yourself. Uh, this is also the time when you can uh, do a lot of things in your community, um, in your neighborhood also. So third house is neighbors and short distance and community. So uh, give birth to big projects uh, for grassroots level, you know, community level, organizations, um, your meetups or uh, doing things collectively in your neighborhood, within the city. Okay, so that's third house. So so this in, you can give birth, but also uh, maybe change transformation, letting go of old ways of things. So you can be a leader, son is the leader, uh, in spearing head. So, so bring about a change and innovation in, in, in the way that community has been doing things. Or in your neighborhood, bring some new initiatives, new uh, you know ways of doing things. Uh, new uh, ways of improving lives of your neighbors, your neighborhood, your HOA, or uh, in, in your city uh, as well. Okay. So that's for the sign of uh, Gemini, Gemini rising. Lagna is Gemini. Uh, next, we'll talk about the sign of Cancers. So if you haven't already, please watch the intersection. Very important. And next, we'll talk about the sign of Cancer. Lagna is Cancer. The rising sign is Cancer. We're talking about rising sign. I keep that... Uh, I repeat that all, always in all my videos. Uh, so we're looking at the rising sign, Cancer. So in that case, the sun is transiting in your 10th house in the nakshatra of Bharani. Uh, you can see here. And sun is the second house ruler. So for you, uh, the second lord is transiting through the 10th house in Bharani nakshatra. And that's the Cancer rising, Cancer lagna. So Cancer rising at 10th house is activated. Okay, uh, ever since uh, Sun entered um, Aries, this has been activated, but with uh, Sun in Ashwini, it's a different energy, but now Sun in Bharani from April 27th, it'll be a completely different energy. Uh, so meaning you have, so there'll be a change and transformation in the way you work, in the way you uh, uh, see your profession. There could be a change in literally in your line of work. Change of job is possible, okay? Uh, change, you know, new ideas. So this period is a period of extreme creativity. You'll give birth to ideas about your profession. Uh, you'll give birth to ideas how you can help your coworkers um, and you know launch new businesses, new initiatives. Extremely creative period for your uh, career. Um, and and so that that new inspiration for new ideas and new ways of doing things at your work at in your uh, in your business will come from a very deep level. So you'll get guidance from the soul. That's the sun. Okay. Uh, one question is, uh, with sun in Bharani, you know, be very ethical. Be very, very just. Uh, support the justice, uh, the, the, the dharma. So 
you know, make sure you do not do anything unethical. Absolutely. I mean, nobody should do, but especially this transit is going to be very sensitive uh, because Yamaraj is active. Yamaraj does not, uh, you know, uh, forgive <laughs> anything. So, um, so basically be very ethical and, and uh, truthful and uh, honest in your profession, in your work, in your business. Uh, now, sun is the second lord, right? So, so this is the time uh, when you may actually uh, indulge in food, like you may uh, tend to eat a lot or uh, just overindulgence in, in eating. So uh, be cautious about that. So eat sattvic food, uh, make, you know, um, do not overeat uh, or do not eat uh, maybe expensive, too much expensive food, right? So that's like... Uh, going out a lot so that that could be the tendency because it's a second lord um, in the nakshatra of bharani so that's one caution then also you this is the time when you'll reinvent or um, renew uh, the way you manage your family wealth there could be a lot of ideas so this is that you can actually uh, create a lot of new things um, a lot of new projects a lot of new investments or, or the way you manage your your family wealth uh, there's also possibility of challenges with the authorities. Uh, so uh, make sure there's no ego and you don't have any you know, challenges with the authorities because you will have the tendency being in burning sun and being in uh, burning nakshatra, you'll have this urge or tendency to change the traditional way of doing things. Uh, especially you will question the hierarchy. So uh, yes, the transformation will be there, but be cautious that there are no issues with the authorities uh, and challenges and, you know, uh, because, or, or there's uh, could be some power struggle with the authorities, right? So uh, that's a possibility. Um, and same thing with the family. So second house is our family in general. So with your family, there shouldn't be any ego issues or, or maybe, uh, you know, figure out inheritance or things like that. So the family wealth that you have, there may be some kind of power struggle in managing that. So that's that's the Bharani Nakshatra. Uh, sun is also your second lord, which is our speech as well, right? So, uh, and in the 10th house. So this is a time for you to become a leader um, at your workplace, you know, talk about some change and innovative projects, um, giving speech, webinars or teaching others at your work um, and, and lots of you know regeneration renewal letting go of old ways of doing things so things like that uh, uh, but again be cautious that you're not uh, having a, a, any challenges or issues with the uh, authorities they could be power struggle but your voice will be heard you'll you'll come across as a leader uh, with second lord in the 10th house so this bharani nakshatra transit is a good period for you to uh, bring about the change in your organization, in your work, in your business, uh, through your voice, through your speech. Okay. So that's for the Cancer Rising. Uh, next, we'll talk about Leo. Uh, next is the sign of Leo, right? So Leo Rising, number five sign. And of course, the sun is the ruler of Leo. Uh, so the Lagna Lord is transiting through your ninth house. And we're specifically talking about the Nakshatra of Bharani. This is going to be a different energy from uh, Aries, which we saw earlier. Uh, this will be a period of change and transformation. So uh, let's see what's uh, going on. So uh, being the Lagna Lord, there will be a, a complete transformation in the way you do things, the way you, uh, your relationship with your gurus, with your teachers, right? So first of all, if there are any gurus or teachers, you may be having uh, issues with, or, you know, it's not serving you uh, and it's not holistic, it's not healing anymore. Uh, so there, there may be a, this may be a time to let go of those um, and and start or, or start fresh with the same guru, with the same teacher. You can start on a fresh page, you know, new page. Or uh, this is time for a new teacher, new guru meeting. So you'll meet a lot of new gurus um, and then you'll bring in a lot of creativity in your belief system, okay? Creativity as in uh, you'll, you'll not follow uh, the old traditions if they're not serving you anymore, okay? Uh, make sure there are no ego issues. There are no um, clash. There's no clash with the with the authorities, with the 
Uh, th this is like all the superiors, okay? Your gurus, your teachers, people you learn from. And, and so there could be a tendency for you to uh, act as a leader in front of your gurus and that, that kind of stuff. Uh, so m make sure you're very careful. One, one big recommendation is in this transit, you can actually spend a lot of time uh, in the temples or religious places, which, whichever you, you follow. Because the Lagna Lord is going to the ninth house. That means you, the Lagna Lord, is going to the ninth house. That is the religious places, spiritual places. Uh, and that will bring about a lot of change and transformation in you. That's Bharani Nakshatra. So it'll give birth to new ideas. So just sitting in the temple. Okay, so that that's the, the big uh, advice is the more time you spend in the temples or religious places or even in the company of Sangha, like your spiritual brothers and sisters, discussions, a higher education, all of that will bring about uh, uh, this change and transformation. And this is the time to uphold the dharma. Ninth house is justice. Ninth house is dharma. And uh, and so your Lagna Lord is there and you'll be very strong as a leader. Uh, you want to uh, be ethical, be truthful and do that um, uh, in that direction with the guidance of your gurus, but you can also become a guru and uh, really demonstrate how important it is to, to be truthful that his son uphold the dharma that is Bharni Nakshatra, uh, Yamaraj, right? So, so you want to do things that are really setting an example uh, as, as a leader uh, to uphold the dharma and justice. Next is the sign of Virgo, the rising sign of Virgo, Virgo Lagna. Uh, we're talking about the sun's transit in the nakshatra of Bharani. Now, for Virgo, sun is your 12th lord. It's going uh, through the 8th uh, house. So it's transiting in your 8th house in the nakshatra of uh, Bharani. So what does that mean? This transit will bring a huge change and transformation in your life. There is no exaggeration. This is really, really pivotal uh, period. Uh, 12th house and eighth house are both activated. Uh, these are both moksha sthanas. Uh, everything about subconscious mind, 12th house is subconscious mind, 12th house is sleep, 12th house is uh, traveling to the other planes of existence, 12th house is ancestors. Okay, so all your ancestors will be there to guide you. Uh, and the eighth house is change and transformation itself, and Bharani is change and transformation. Eighth house is the secrets of the universe. Okay, so combine all of that. This will bring... Uh, some new ideas, huge dose of creativities. Bharani, the symbol is a female reproductive organ. So you'll give birth to a lot of ideas. How, uh, you know, what what is your purpose? What is the secret of the universe? What is the purpose of existence? Uh, but also uh, at the subconscious mind, uh, you know, who you are. And you, you'll come out as a new personality, as a new being. Uh, at the soul level, this will be a lot of soul searching um, and because of the sun in Bharani. So Yamaraj will be guiding you. Uh, people say 8th house is the house of death and, and 12th house is the losses or you know other planes of existence. That's all uh, combining here, that all energy. And you'll do that in a very dharmic manner as a leader. Sun is the leader. Sun is the king. And this will shed light on your 8th house. Wherever sun goes, that house is illuminated, right? So 8th house matters will bring uh, to surface, it will come to surface. Uh, so you'll discover there'll be a new realization. You'll be a new being. This, this is going to be like a, you're taking a bath, uh, an, a, an energetic bath, right? So uh, you'll discover who you are. Um, and this is like shedding your skin. The snakes shedding their skin, uh, reju complete rejuvenation. Okay. So this is the period that... Uh, you'll discover the purpose of your soul, Sanizatma Karaka. This may literally lead to enlightenment and liberation. Um, you may also want to uh, go on a retreat or like self-isolation or, you know, within your home, spend some time by yourself or during, you know, throughout this transit, just be more meditative, be, be talking to yourself, going within. Okay. Uh, yes, you can definitely go on a retreat as well especially in a foreign country, pilgrimage. Okay, so spiritual travel, spiritual pilgrimage, retreat center, um, uh, rejuvenation, like even like all these Ayurveda uh, modalities, panchakarma, 
great time. So that will activate your third eye, the Shirodhara. Uh, it will rejuvenate your body, uh, cleansing, lots of cleansing, letting go of uh, things that are not serving you. Eighth house is also shared wealth, right? So the way you manage shared wealth, maybe you might get huge inheritance. Yamaraj will bring you justice. Okay, uh, But you'll be fair. You have to be very ethical in all that you do. Very important that Virgo people are very ethical during this transit. Otherwise, Yamaraj will literally, you know, uh, punish, right? So that's that's the job of Dharmaraj. He's the, or Yamaraj. He's the, he collects all the karma that he, he takes into account everything that we do. So especially with the sun in Bharni, it, everything will be uh, really transparent. So you want to be very truthful and honest and ethical and, and justful. Uh, uphold the justice. Uh, be cautious in, in your uh, passion and sexuality because uh, that there are no hidden secrets or dirty secrets because this will bring out those secrets. So you have to be very uh, cautious about uh, or not to be overindulgent uh, in pleasure and passion and sexuality. Uh, this is the time for cleansing at all levels, even like you know, cleansing your home, uh, garage, put on, you know, sell stuff on garage sale, or just give away things. Uh, donation is a big remedy for Virgo. Eighth house is giving away; it's excretion, literally. Uh, cleansing. Eighth house is cleansing. Twelfth house is donations, losses. I mean, losses. The the voluntary losses are donations. So excellent time to make, to give donations to priests or. Um, for causes in in um, uh, you know foreign countries, that's twelfth house. So all of that, uh, plus also the remedies that we discussed in the intro section. So watch the intro section, um, and then uh, this is a massive period of change and transformation at every level for Virgo rising. Next is a sign of Libra. Libra rising. Uh, if your lagna or rising sign is Libra, um, then uh, your sun is. Uh, so basically, sun for you is eleventh uh, lord. Uh, let me show you that. So, so here, so this is the sun rules Leo. That's the eleventh lord, and it's transiting through your seventh house. Okay, so Libra rising, your eleventh lord sun is transiting through the seventh house uh, of relationships, and we'll discuss what that means. Uh, and this is specifically the transit of. Uh, sun in the nakshatra of Bharani from April 27th through May 11th. So sun in Bharani uh, in the seventh house. So your relationships may undergo a big shift. Okay. Um, Bharani, uh, the theme is um, basically birth and death or death and birth. So it's a cycle. It's a karmic cycle, the wheel of karma, right? So this will bring a lot of shift. Uh, you may be letting go of a lot of things in your relationship that are not serving you. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, embracing new ways of, of doing things in your relationship. Or literally it may mean, uh, this may mean ending of a relationship and beginning of a new one. Okay. But there's going to be huge uh, renewal, huge transformation, huge change um, in your uh, relationship. Uh, and that could also mean... Uh, um, change and transformation uh, for your partner in your partner's life. Okay, so the way they uh, view relationship or in their life itself. So, so basically, all your personal as well as business partnerships, one-on-one -on -one relationships will undergo a huge change during this uh, period. This is the period of cleansing. So, people a lot of times uh, say, "Oh, this is bad for Libra." Uh, no, this is not bad. Cleansing is necessary. So that may mean a cleansing of your current relationship. That doesn't mean that you, it, it doesn't mean end of relationship. It just means cleansing of uh, your relationship, the way you do things, the way you approach relationship, the way your your uh, your you know your responsibility in your relationship, or how the relationship is serving you. Okay, so are you viewing? Uh, are you in a relationship just for you know? the base desires, or are you uh, in a relationship for uh, spiritual growth for you together as a couple or as a business partner? So that's going to be uh, the theme. But there's also a huge dose of creativity. Bharani is all about giving birth. 
the symbol is female reproductive organ. Watch the intersection to understand the deeper meanings. So this means huge opportunity for you to create something new in your relationship or literally also uh, there may be opportunities for new relationships, new partnerships, one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal as well as, as, well as business. Uh, there's also caution there for Libra as well uh, that Sun is the 11th Lord, so which is your desires, right? So that's coming in the house of relationships. So there may be a tendency of overindulgence, again, in especially in uh, sexuality or pleasure seeking. So be uh, cautious about that. Uh, you may also meet somebody new uh, through your friend circle. So they may become your, uh, you know, partner eventually. Okay. Um, 11th house is also financial again. So this is the time for you and your partner to sit down and completely revamp or think of new ways or change or transform your finances. Join finances as a partner. Even in a business partnership, this is the time re to evaluate the way you're making money. It has to be very just and ethical uh, because Sun and Bharni will not tolerate any unethical uh, financial transactions. So that's one caution. So as a partner, uh, you know, you, both of you want to make sure that you are doing things ethically, but then also be very creative, uh, how you can uh, figure out new ways of making money together. And Bharni will support you with all the creativity in this world. Okay. Now, yes, in general, the whenever the sun goes in the seventh house, there could be a, a situation where uh, your partner is too bright. You know, they're just too or famous or too big a stature. So that's why uh, the other partner, you know, they feel like they're not up to that kind of brilliance. So, so but this is the time to let go. Uh, even, even the idea that your partner is too famous or too, too big, okay? Just, just absorb that energy. So that, that's transformation for you, that to, to let go of that ego that you're not getting recognition, your partner is getting recognition, okay? So you, this is the time when your partner may actually shine as a leader. They may transform. They may transform the society at large because it's the 11th Lord that's going through Bharani. 11th house is all about reaching out to the masses. So they are, they could be transforming the society. So look at it that way, okay? So, so yes, I mean, so, but, but very careful, uh, again, sun is the king, so there may be ego issues. There may be clashes of of two uh, uh, two egos. So that's the big caution for uh, for Libra. Okay? So that's for the sign of Libra. Uh, watch the intersection. Next, we'll talk about Scorpio rising. Next is Scorpio rising. Uh, the lagna is Scorpio. Uh, so for Scorpio, sun is the tenth lord, and it's uh, transiting through the sixth house. Uh, sun in Bharani from uh, April twenty seventh through May eleventh. Uh, so what's happening for Scorpio? Uh, watch the intersection first to understand the deeper meaning of Bharni and Sun in Bharni. So this is going to be a big shift uh, from Sun in Ashwini versus Sun in Bharani uh, for Scorpio rising. See, always remember uh, the overall theme, right? So the, the main theme with Bharni is change and transformation. New beginnings also, ending of the old um, and cleansing. And it's a very uh, deep nakshatra, a lot of creativity, big things you can create. Uh, overall, you know, we talked about Ashwini also, new things, innovations, but here it's a different energy. Uh, you're giving birth to some profound projects and things behind the scenes and then bring them out in the open once they're ready. Okay, so, uh, so uh, for Scorpio, it's interesting. Uh, first of all, Sun is the 10th Lord. And it's transiting through the sixth house. So both 10th and sixth houses are activated. See, sixth house is our job. It's more like nine to five kind of a job. Whereas 10th house is profession, uh, also like more higher status kind of a job, you know, your uh, executive level. Uh, it's also the business entrepreneurship. So both these houses are activated. That means there'll be a big change in transformation, no matter you're doing a nine to five type of a job or uh, you have a business of your own, or you're an executive uh, entrepreneur. So all of so your career will undergo a huge change and transformation. But <clears throat> Bharani will um, make you let go of things that are not serving you. 
So again, that could be within your current profession, within the current job or your business, uh, meaning you may bring a lot of change in the way you're doing work or in your uh, environment or in the hierarchy also of that company hierarchy of the business of your company of your uh, brand you know how you do things traditional ways may go out new ways may come in but also that could literally mean you may stop one way of one line of work and start a new line of work or uh, there could be a break and then you may start a new job um, a job as well as a new business or new so this is basically complete uh, transformation and change of your career Again, one caution for uh, Scorpio is that uh, don't have any ego issues with the authorities, uh, with the superiors. Uh, so 10th house uh, lord and Bharani has that, you know, energy. There could be issues, especially sun in Bharani, uh, with the authorities, with the uh, superiors, with the bosses and stuff. So that that's uh, one big area. But this will bring a lot of creativity for you. Okay, so Bharani, it's all about, the symbol is a female reproductive organ. So be as creative as you can be. And this is for like big things. Give birth to literally to something big. And also Bharani, the, the Yamaraj is the deity. So be very truthful and uphold the dharma. Support the justice. Um, be very ethical at your work. So in your profession, no matter a job or business or your company, uh, be very ethical and truthful and do the right thing, no matter how hard it is. Uh, and if you've ever, you know, done any unethical things, now this is the time sort of Yamaraj will uh, ask for uh, the, uh, this is the bookkeeping, you know, the, the accounts will be settled. So you want to start fresh. Um, and if you've been ethical and doing good things, so continue doing that. Uh, you know, this is the time to really, really be very careful, even slightest things, uh, unethical things may uh, may turn into something big. So be very cautious. This is also the time uh, to maybe start a new health routine. Um, Bharani is also, uh, it's all about like cleansing, um, cleaning up the old and bringing in the new. And so uh, sun in Bharani, sun is our immunity. Uh, and in sixth house, that's our health, health routine and daily routine. So be very strict or you can adopt some new, uh, you know, daily routine or some new health regimen, uh, some new exercise, basically new ways of uh, dealing with your health. And this may actually uh, say, if you have some health issues, this will uh, revitalize, this will rejuvenate, this will cleanse the negativity, this will cleanse the disease and bring in new healing and, and rejuvenation to your uh, life, to your health, to your body in general. Um, and then sixth house is service also. So this is perfect time. Um, See, the things you can do is Bharani is about life and death, birth and death. So maybe you can help uh, with the hospice care, you know, end of life type of volunteer work will be excellent uh, remedy for this. Uh, and especially the Shani mantras will be good uh, for Scorpio, the ones we discussed in the in the intersection also. And so it's very pertinent for you. Uh, and then helping the old people. Um, and then also birthing process helping, you know, childbirth or new mothers. So any of that will be excellent remedy for you throughout this period. Uh, this will bring good health for you. So I, I always say a good remedy, you know, whatever issue you're having in your life, just uh, give away, give out or help or volunteer in that very same um, area of life. Uh, so then that becomes a good remedy. So sixth house, uh, follow a good routine, start a new daily routine, follow a good health routine, uh, do something for your health and do something for others. And donation again is, is very good. And then because it's the 6th house and 10th house connection, so you can actually help your colleagues. You can help other uh, people in your company. Uh, and as a leader, you know, son is the lead, son is the king. So you can lead by example. Uh, as we discussed, be truthful, be ethical and work hard. And essentially, so for, especially for Scorpio rising, the key word is, transformational leadership okay bring about change and transformation as a leader uh, so uh, big uh, like overall uh, you know overhaul of your uh, mission overhaul of the company <clears throat> or the way the company is doing business or bring about big changes in your company in your work uh, workplace so this is an excellent time for that
Next is Sagittarius rising. Um, so Sagittarius rising number nine sign, the Lagna is Sagittarius. Again, this is sidereal zodiac, not the Western zodiac, not the tropical zodiac, sidereal zodiac, Sagittarius rising, the Lagna is Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius, sun is the uh, ninth house ruler and it's transiting, transiting through the fifth house. So ninth Lord going over the fifth house in the nakshatra of Bharani. So that's what we're discussing. So let's see how uh, that will play out. This is a period of transformation and change for your uh, romantic relationships, first of all. If your current romantic relationship is not serving you, then maybe this is time for a new one. Or in your current relationship, then maybe this is a time to uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, make things better, bring in new ideas, new things, new stuff, creativity, um, and evolve to the next level, uh, right, as a, as a couple. And, uh, uh, and then also fifth house itself is the house of creativity. Bharni is the uh, nakshatra of creativity, lot of creativity. The symbol is a female reproductive organ. So you can give birth to a lot of ideas. Literally, this is like a cre explosion of creativity, right? So uh, be as creative as possible in any area. Uh, also involve your children. This may be a very transformative period for your children as well, or your relationship with the children the way you uh, deal with them. Uh, so you can transform as a parent, okay? It, it doesn't necessarily mean it's fifth house. That means uh, big changes for your children. This may mean you as a parent may uh, transform. Uh, you may start, you know, using new techniques or new ways of, of dealing with your children. How, you know, setting uh, an example, uh, especially son here, right? So son in Bharani is asking you to become a leader, uh, lead by example. Uh, that's how you want to teach your children. Okay. And ninth Lord also. Sun is the ninth Lord sitting in the fifth house. So uh, there could be changes in, in your gurus. You may meet new gurus or you may uh, not uh, uh, associate anymore with the old ones, right? So, or your belief system may undergo a change. Your children's belief system may undergo a change, a big change. Uh, you can be very creative. You can question the traditional way of doing things, right? Why we have been following this tradition or or uh, uh, why we haven't been following any traditions, right? So it may be a time to go back to traditions. Just change, uh, rejuvenation, transformation in your belief system or in your children's be belief system or in your romantic relationships. You, you guys may become more spiritual uh, or you can actually get counseling from a guru. That's the ninth Lord, right? In the fifth house of romance and uh, re uh, romantic relationships. You can get advice from gurus. Um, also, uh, literally, this could be a period when uh, you know you may think of uh, having a child if you're if you've been wanting or trying to have a child. So this is a bharani is the birth and the death. It's the cycle of life and death, right? So a very potent nakshatra uh, for thinking on those lines, uh, and then also traveling with your children uh, for pilgrimage, especially long distance travels, and traveling with your romantic partner also, and traveling with your father maybe. Uh, and traveling with your guru or with your sangha. Excellent time. And this travel will bring about a lot of change and transformation for you um, and being the Bharani Nakshatra. Okay, so those are the things uh, you can expect uh, for Sagittarius rising. Next is Capricorn rising. Uh, for Capricorn number 10 sign, uh, as you can see, sun is the eighth house ruler. Eighth house is Leo for you. Uh, eighth house ruler going over your fourth house. So fourth house is activated, eighth house is activated, and sun is going in uh, through the nakshatra of Bharani. Um, and that'll be from April 27th through May 11th. Um, so this is going to be a big uh, transformation for you. Uh, both fourth house and eighth house are moksha sthanas, right? Um, so that means uh, change at a very deep level. So, so Eighth house is itself the house of change and transformation. Number two, eighth house is all the hidden things, uh, secrets, uh, esoteric wisdom. Fourth house is your inner happiness. Okay, so this transit will bring about such profound change and transformation uh, that it you'll discover what makes you happy. Okay, so don't resist this change. That's the key. Because 4th house, 8th house, 12th house, these, the moksha sthanas, 
these houses are very transformative in general. And that's for the highest good. That's for your good, uh, for the evolution of your soul. So you will experience deep change and transformation. And that was taking place in when Sun was in Ashwini also. But in Bharani, the whole theme is change and trust. This is taking it to a, a much higher level. Okay. Um, and then second is cleansing. Uh, cleansing at a deep level so that you can figure out what really makes you happy. Fourth house. Some of the secrets may be revealed. Fourth house is basically things that are not visible to the public. Okay, um, and eighth house is all the secrets, but wherever sun goes, it eliminates that area of life, that house. So uh, some of the secrets may be revealed. So that means if there are like any, uh, you know, mundane secrets or, or about your day to day life or things like that, those may surface. But also, literally, you'll discover the secrets of the universe, the purpose of universe, purpose of our existence, purpose of your existence, your purpose in life. All of those will be revealed to you. This may be a very transformative period for your mother or your relationship with your mother. Uh, but this is, let's let's say if, if, if you've had a difficult relationship with your mother, this may be a time when you can really uh, start fresh. Let it, letting go of the old, which is the Yamaraj, the death of the old, um, and then uh, welcoming the new, which is the female reproductive organ. So giving birth to a new uh, relationship with your mother or your relationship with your home as well, meaning there could be, re, um, you could do renovation in your home, some changes um, in your home environment. Uh, so basically sitting at your home, you'll get uh, secrets of the universe, meaning the eighth Lord is coming to the fourth house. So you may get visitors or uh, gurus or anybody, you know, people may just drop in or come by your ho house, literally. And you may gain insights from them. So this is the time to say Atithi Deva Bhava, which means uh, it's a Sanskrit word, meaning uh, you are welcoming all the guests, just like God. So you don't know who will, uh, you know, in what form God will appear at your residence. So literally this is, and that will lead to change and transformation. So accept every guest with respect. And, and that could be a messenger or, uh, something to bring change for you in your day-to-day -day life, in your in your life overall. You may have some changes going on in the way you manage your uh, inheritance uh, or, uh, you know, money from other people. That's the eighth house. So uh, eighth house ruler going through Bharani means a lot of change the way you've been dealing with, with money, uh, especially money from other people or money from your spouse or in-laws or your inheritance, all of that, uh, there could be a big shift in the way you manage that, or you may get, uh, you know, sort of like windfall of uh, money, some new or new creative ideas of how to manage that, how to grow that. Uh, so all of that is happening for Capricorn rising. Uh, next, we'll talk about Aquarius. So next is Aquarius rising, uh, Aquarius lagna, um, and this is Adriel Zodiac. So for Aquarius rising, uh, sun is the seventh lord. Leo is your seventh house, sun is the ruler of seventh house, and sun is transiting through the, your third house. So sun in Bharani, um, and it's going over your third house, it's the seventh lord. First of all, Bharani is all about creativity. Uh, third house is all the skills. So this is absolutely fantastic time for you to learn some new skills. Uh, could be for your profession, could be for your hobby, could be for, you know, art, dance, music, anything like that. So any skills, uh, you, you basically upskill yourself. Uh, you could also do that with your siblings, younger siblings, uh, especially skills with your hands. You could do that along with your neighbors, your connection with your neighbors. So something new will, will be there, some new energy with respect to your neighbors or within your community. Uh, you may be making short distance travels to uh, meet new people who will bring, uh, bring transformation and change in your life. Okay. And then seventh Lord also, that means uh, there could be a big shift, a change, transformation in your one-on-one -on -one partnerships, which is personal uh, relationships and also like your spouse or uh, your business partners. So you'll undergo a big shift in, uh, in your relationships, um, in your partnerships, uh, and there'll be a lot of cleansing 
So that means maybe out with the old and new, you know, in with the new. So that means uh, existing relationships may undergo a change, a shift, a transformation, or you literally you may uh, start a new relationship uh, during this time. Now, the third house is involved and the seventh house is involved. And both these are uh, Kama Trikona, right? So these are the Kama Sthans, sthana, so meaning uh, houses of desire. So keep, uh, keep a check on your desires, uh, especially the sexual desires with the partner. Um, and third house is all the desires, day-to-day -day life and you know things that we desire, we like to have. So uh, there could be a chance of overindulgence during this time period. So keep an eye on that. Also be cautious about any ego issues with your partner or with your younger siblings or with your neighbors. Um, there's, there's a chance. And, and then also uh, be careful about issues with any uh, you know, authorities in your neighborhood. Okay. Third house represents our courage as well, especially courage to deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, issues and things in life. Uh, so this will make you very courageous. You, you will be uh, willing to let go of things that are not serving you and you'll emerge as a leader. So that means you, you can emerge as a leader in your neighborhood, in your community, in your city. It's all the short distance within the city, let's say. Um, and so anything that's not serving you in your relationship with your siblings also or in your partnerships, uh, you'll change that and you'll set an example for other people to follow. So that's for the sign of Aquarius. Next, we'll talk about uh, the Pisces. Next is the sign of Pisces. Pisces rising. The Lagna is Pisces. Okay, your rising sign is Pisces. We're looking at that. Uh, for Pisces, uh, Sun is the sixth lord. Uh, Leo sign is sixth uh, house for Pisces. And it's transiting through the second house. So we're talking about Sun's transit in Bharani Nakshatra. And for Pisces, the sixth lord is in your second house house. So very powerful Bharani energy. Uh, sun will activate that energy of Bharani in the second house. So you may, um, you know, change the way you speak, uh, transformation in the way you speak. So you may start speaking very, uh, you know, the, the truth. Sun, sun brings out the truth. Bharani is the Yamaraj, is the god of uh, truth and, you know, justice. So you may start speaking the truth. Meaning you may not be afraid anymore to speak the truth. You may become a leader or even inspire other people with your speech. This is the time to rise and re basically transform the way you, you uh, communicate in your speech. Secondly, this may also be the time when you will uh, transform your diet, the food that you eat. You'll, you'll eat more sattvic food. Uh, maybe even fasting because like Yamaraj, and it's all uh, very... Um, like uh, hardworking or truthful or sattvic or dharmic uh, nakshatra. So you may decide to eat very sattvic, very or maybe let's, let's say organic or, um, or, or, or maybe just vegetarian uh, diet, right? So, so not harming other people. So, so th this whole idea of transforming what you're putting in your body. Okay, so that, that's gonna be the theme. Then second house is your family wealth. Uh, this will bring a lot of changes in the way you manage your family wealth, the way you look at your family wealth, uh, and maybe creative ways, new ways of, of increasing your family wealth. This is the sixth house, uh, Lord. Sixth house is the house of enemies also. So Bharani is Yamaraj, right? So this is going to be a very uh, intense period where you will annihilate the inner, de inner demons, and also face uh, the external enemies with courage. So enemies could mean obstacles, right? So any obstacles in your way, you'll face those with courage. Sixth house is also volunteer and helping other people. So Sun and Bharani will, will encourage you to be a community leader. So organize a lot of grassroots movements um, and, then, and then speak about those, right? So sixth Lord in the second house, house of speech. So you want to, uh, figure out how you can help other people but and, and also talk about it and encourage inspire other people uh, second house and sixth house these are both um, uh, arthasthanas so that means uh, connected with the money 
and the uh, material resources. So you'll find new ways, creative ways of making money. You'll find creative ways of, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, accumulate wealth uh, for, for your finances. This will bring transformation for your finances. For your health also, uh, this will be a period of transformation. Sixth Lord is, is the health. Bharani, basically, any any planet that goes into Bharani uh, comes out as a new, uh, you know, new entity. So change and transformation, literally death of the old and birth of the new cycle of karma. So you will be a new person in all of the areas that that planet is touching. So second house and sixth house, a lot of things will go change and transformation for the better. So that's uh, overall for the sign of Pisces. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you like the content. And I highly recommend joining uh, this course, nine-week course coming up, a uh, really in-depth uh, course um, and fun course. You'll learn through practical application of uh, the concepts we learn in class, and then we immediately apply on charts of uh, more than 51 personalities in this course. Thank you for watching.